One of the biggest opportunities when it comes to content creation is video podcasting because it's probably one of the most effective and productive ways of creating content. You simply sit down once and then from that piece of content, you have an audio file, you have a video file, and you can make smaller clips. You can also make vertical videos. And you can do a lot of things by just doing podcasting. But what if I told you that you don't have to be the one doing all that work, making sure your podcast does all the things it needs to do. That's why in this video, I'm going to be talking about how I use AI in my podcast workflow and has allowed me to grow my podcast with very little actual effort. Let's get into it. You got to just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Omar's Corey with Think Media. Now we'll be sure to post links down to all the tools that I'll be talking about down in the description below. And I would encourage you to listen to this breakdown and see what you can implement in your workflow to make you more productive with your video podcast. I understand some people have virtual podcasts and other people have in-person podcasts. Some people use one camera. Some people like me use up to three cameras. And so just take what I'm saying with the principles or pull out the principles of what it is I'm saying. But let me talk real quick about the hardware on how I capture my podcast. I use three cameras with usually two guests. So we have two angles that are shooting a tight angle. So we have one on me and then we have one on a guest. And then I have what is called a wide angle, which includes both of us. Now, most people who have a multi-camera podcast setup is actually running HDMI cables into a switcher, like a Blackmagic ATEM switcher, and then they're having somebody off camera switch the conversation in real time. Now, I love that workflow. The thing with it is most people are buying these high quality 4K cameras, but they're killing the potential of their 4K by using an ATEM switcher because the ATEM minis only support 1080 at the time of shooting this video. And so me, I'm, I love my stuff to be drippy crispy, you know what I'm saying? And if I'm using really nice Sony cameras, I wanna make sure that I'm maximizing on the quality. And I get a ton of comments on my podcast on just the quality itself. So here's what I do. I'm just gonna break it down really quickly. I make sure I record all three angles simultaneous onto an SD card. Nowadays, you can get really big SD cards for a very inexpensive cost. And the cameras that I actually use are Sony FX 30s. These are awesome cameras because they have internal fans and usually my podcast runs well over an hour and I don't want to have to worry about cameras overheating and things like that. Another thing I want to talk about when it comes to the equipment is that these FX 30s have a top handle that allow me to plug in the microphone that each person is using directly into the camera that is facing them. So if I just break this down verbally, the camera that's facing me has my microphone plugged directly into it. So if you look at the video file, the audio file is connected to it as well. Now my guests in the same situation, they will have a tight angle on them and their audio is also plugged into that camera. And then the center camera most often is just capturing a you know scratch audio file. When I say that, I mean, it's just capturing uh, audio so that I could sync the all the clips later in post. This is important to note because you want to make sure that you can just with a click of a button sync your entire podcast, all three angles. Now you don't need to use the exact same hardware that I use because maybe you have good cameras already and they're capturing a great image. What you do need to do is make sure that you're capturing separate audio files. So each person that is on your podcast, you want to make sure that they have their own separate track. And if you buy a Zoom pod track, which is about $150 or a Rodecaster, you could totally capture separate audio files, high quality audio files on both of these devices. Personally, I went with the FX 30s because I love that you can just plug directly into them. And by the way, I've made a full breakdown video of my entire video podcast setup. I'll post a link to it down in the description below. But it's just important to know that you get at least a minimum of two angles. And then secondly, a audio file for each person that's on your show. This also works for a virtual conversation because if you use something like StreamYard or Riverside, you can record an ISO file with one person's camera and audio, and then you can record another person or yourself with an ISO file. So I just wanted to make the point that this is what you need in order for this AI tool that I'm about to break down to work. Now let's talk about the first tool that I use in this video podcast workflow that I have, and it coincides or works well with Adobe Premiere Pro. This AI tool is called Autopod. If you haven't heard of this, it is a plugin inside of Adobe Premiere Pro, and I would imagine that eventually they're going to have plugins for other editing softwares, but it plugs right into Adobe Premiere Pro and literally check this, will switch your podcast in less than two minutes. Your 4K files 
in less than two minutes. And I love this tool and I've been using it since day zero of my podcast. And I implemented this in my workflow because I knew I didn't want my video person to be locked in, focused, switching the podcast, number one. And number two, I didn't wanna end up with a 1080p project file. I wanted 4K resolution. And so depending on your computer or laptop that you use, if you use any of Apple's recent stuff with their M1 or M2 or M3 chips, you're gonna be A-OK. -okay. But Autopod, generally speaking, is just a great tool. And I would even say that Autopod does a better job at switching camera angles than a human being would in real time. Now, I do get the benefit in switching a video podcast in real time as far as being able to have pretty much your edit almost done, but it literally takes just about five to 10 minutes with Autopod for it to all work out and be ready to go. And so this is essentially how it works. Once you download Autopod and you get it all hooked up inside of your Premiere Pro, you throw all your projects on a timeline. So you have your wide angle, you have your two tight angles maybe, or maybe you just have your two tight angles, and then you have your two audio files, the one with you and then the one with your guests. So the first thing you're gonna do when setting up Autopod to do its thing is you first gotta start a sequence in Premiere Pro and sync up all your clips and make sure that they're aligned. Make sure that the scratch audio aligns with the two audio files or the multiple audio files that you grabbed, whether on your recorder or what have you. But in total, you should have three video files and three audio files, sync it all up, and then you're gonna actually cut off the beginning and cut off the end to make sure that they're all lined up. The next thing I do is make any additional adjustments I need to make on my video files and audio files, whether that's adding certain effects like color grading and things like that, or in the audio side of things, adding some effects to really make the audio sound really good. I then highlight all the clips and then unlink them because I don't want Autopod to chop up the audio. I just want it to chop up the video. Now, before we do anything else, when we're at this point, we wanna duplicate the sequence that we have because if something were to go wrong, you have a reference point to start over from because once you start moving forward, it's really annoying to have to move backwards. So just duplicate your sequence and just call it draft. Once you got all this down, you're gonna go then to window at the top of your screen, go to extensions, and then go to multi-cam editor from Autopod. Open that up, hopefully you're logged in and all those things are good to go. And then now it's time to tell Autopod what things are and where things are at. Now the first drop down option you're gonna see is the cutting method and we leave this to standard. And then the next one you're gonna see multi-shot frequency. Personally, I keep it on low because I don't want it to show the wide angle all that much. And that's because when I make vertical videos, I don't wanna always have to reformat the clip to be able to show both people or what have you. If that went over your head, don't worry about it. Just keep it on low if you wanna do what I do. The next thing you're gonna do is the number of speakers. Now, if you have two people, you're gonna select two, and then you're gonna have number of cameras. The next section is identifying who is speaking based on the audio track. So let's just say on A1, I'm the one who's talking or that's my audio file. I'm gonna just put the name right there. And then the A2 file is going to be your guest. Now, it's very important that you understand where each of these people are uh, because it's gonna align with the video, which is what the next section is, and that is tagging your speaker. And then you're gonna use the drop down arrow to simply select your speakers. So we could say video two is my guest, and then video three could be both speakers or all speakers, and this is the wide angle, right? Now, I would encourage you to pause there because if this is what you're going to do all the time, you can actually create a preset. And by creating this preset, you won't have to do this process time and time again. You're just gonna save that one minute of setup that I just did. But for whatever it's worth, we're just gonna hit go. And then literally, Autopod takes a second to do its thing. And then you literally see it cut the video files in real time. It's absolutely insane, especially when you do it for the very first time. You're like, whoa, this is the power of AI. It's wild. And something I've actually noticed with Autopod is they can switch oftentimes before the person even talks. This is why I say it's a little bit better than a human being switching in real time because it's pre-switching before a person talks because it's using artificial intelligence. Now, when it's done doing its thing, it's gonna give you a success message and you can just hit okay. If it can't do it, it's gonna tell you why it can't do it. And so I would just encourage you to follow the directions if you're doing something incorrect. But if you were to follow what I mentioned all the way up until this point, you should be A-OK. -okay. So now you technically have your video podcast ready to be exported in 4K or whatever resolution you wanna go with. And you can also export the audio. 
Now there is something that I do do to my podcast that would make your podcast a little more interesting when it comes to the intro, and that is starting your podcast with a highlight reel. Essentially, this is just taking very powerful moments in your conversation and front loading it to the front of your podcast as its intro, but I literally use AI to do this as well. So an average person would actually watch this podcast through and pick out some of those moments that you wanna put at the front of your podcast. I'm gonna encourage you to use this AI tool called Opus Clips. Opus Clips is as simple as uploading a video file or just putting a YouTube link into this web-based software and then letting it do its thing. And what it's gonna give you is it's gonna give you these powerful moments from a conversation or a long form talking head video that you can then use that data to create your intro inside of Premiere Pro. Nolan on the Think Media team made a more in-depth video on Opus Clips. Now Opus Clips isn't perfect. They're gonna kick you out about 10 clips to choose from. I would encourage you to choose about two to three. I typically keep my podcast intro about under 60 seconds, unless I have to go a little bit longer, but you could probably get across a couple powerful moments, you know, like a coming up moment on your podcast with just a few of the best clips that it gives you. Now, one thing that will make your intro sound super dramatic and cinematic is to add music. Now, you don't wanna add just any kind of music because you can get flagged and be demonetized on YouTube or somebody can come after you for copyright strikes and things like that. We like to use epidemic sound for our podcast, and I love it because it gives me the ability to switch out my intro music based on the type of intro I have, because I interview very different guests with different energies and things like that. But what I love about epidemic sound is they make it so easy for you to find music and sounds that'll make your intro sound really powerful and compelling and really draw a listener or watcher in. And if you wanna check out Epidemic Sound for yourself, we have a special deal going on. We'll post a link to it down in the description below, or you can just go to thinkmediasounds.com. Thank you, Epidemic Sound, for sponsoring this video. Now, I'll leave it up to you at this point in the workflow. If you wanted to add like social media handles and subscribe buttons and things like that, I don't typically do it. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, you can always say in your podcast, please subscribe. Or something I actually do is I include an ad read for my own product and services, which is something that you should do. You should totally sponsor your own podcast. People are already giving you attention. I would just encourage you to do that. But if we were to render this video out and then upload it to YouTube and, and then export the audio file of your podcast and upload that to a podcast hosting platform, you are ready to release your podcast, but your job isn't done. A lot of people literally stop here and I think it's just a poor, stewardship thing because it's like, yo, you have this great piece of content. Why don't you squeeze the crap out of it and post more content from this conversation? And so what I encourage you to do is to now use Opus Clips to get clips to be able to post it on YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, and TikTok, or even Facebook Reels. Now, if you use some of the files that Opus Clips gave you from the conversation, I would just say to make it yours. You know, you don't, it doesn't have to look like everybody else's captions and emojis and stuff like that. Do what you like. I think it's important that you do that because I find everybody's starting to look the same on social media. And if there's like a font you prefer or a color, uh, you know, palette that you would prefer, just go ahead and go nuts on that and just make it yours. But it's cool that you didn't even have to do the work to cut up those reels because Opus did the work. But I just think it's really cool that AI is used to cut up these moments that you can use to promote your podcast or these segments. A lot of the times people watch these moments on my Instagram for my podcast and they get persuaded to then go and watch the full length or listen to the full length podcast. And anytime you get somebody to watch one long episode and then they love it, you're probably gonna get this new listener and eventually get this new fan, which is awesome. The next AI tool, I would actually give you the option if you would like to use it or not, but this is called video.ai. And here's the difference between video.ai and Opus Clips. Video.ai is gonna actually give you segments of your conversation where you can upload a little bit longer moments. You could say anywhere between five to 12 or 15 minute moments from your podcast and upload these as separate YouTube videos. And something that you can do to jumpstart this process is run your whole podcast through this, get kicked back what I like to call highlight moments from your podcast, and then repackage them for potentially further reach on your YouTube channel 
or you could even have a highlights YouTube channel. This is pretty meta. This is a lot of what the podcast pros are doing. They're starting clip channels or highlight channels that will show off some segments, longer form segments, and it's just a great way to get more exposure. And by the use of AI, it's not gonna make you do all that much work. I would say, however, as a YouTube strategist person, that you do wanna take into account how this moment is now gonna be repackaged for release, right? You wanna take into account the title, the thumbnail, and all those various things. The next part of the podcast workflow is promotion. And you can use AI tools like ChatGPT or even Descript to come up with a description around your podcast. Literally tell one of these tools to write you out a description of your podcast. Take that and put it in the YouTube description, the show notes of your podcast, and send out an email to your newsletter or as a newsletter about your podcast releasing. Again, this is time that you're not taking to have to come up and write up all these things. You're using AI to just skip the process and just so that it would allow you to move faster. And that's really the power of AI. It's not to replace jobs necessarily, even though it may at some point, it's to use it to be able to be more productive. And by breaking down all these AI tools that you can use in a video podcast workflow, I believe you can actually grow your podcast faster than it would have taken if you had to manually do everything that I was talking about, right? And so I hope you got value in this video. And if you did, hit that like button and you can click or tap the screen if you wanna see a bigger breakdown on Opus Clips because maybe you have long form videos on your YouTube channel that you can literally turn into YouTube Shorts or Instagram Reels. So click or tap the screen and I can't wait to see you in a future video. Peace.